really amazing experiences with rhinos. So I thought we'd chat a little bit about them. And, and my first love for rhinos first started when I was in the Eastern Cape in, in South Africa. It's a, it's a beautiful area. Uh, naturally occurring down there is the black rhino, the same species of rhino that we saw. However, a lot of the game reserves that once were farms, where they used to farm pineapples and chicory and all these different things, and they're trying to restore them. And uh, they've introduced white rhinos. Uh, because of all the big open areas now, from particularly the pineapple and chicory farming, it's left massive scars in the forms of open plains. Now, open plains aren't actually natural down in that part of the Eastern Cape thicket. Eastern Cape. It's the Albany thicket, so small evergreen shrubs, very few tree species. It's particularly dense. There's a bit of fanebos as well. Uh, riverine thickets are along the, the rivers, of course. It's quite diverse. I always tell you about how amazing the wildlife and the bird life is down there, particularly the bird life. So I'm going to tell you the story of a very famous rhino. And some of you may have heard of her. Some of you may have even watched a documentary that was made about her on, on BBC. And it's a rhino by the name of Tandy. Now, when I first started working there, unfortunately, one night, three rhinos were poached. Very, very sad. In one evening. And they were white rhinos. And one rhino died on the spot. Uh, they actually they used... Um, a particular drug whether it was m99 or ketamine i'm not sure what one they would have used but those are the typical drugs that you would use to dart a rhino and a lot of the wildlife out here one of them died unfortunately uh, and when they got found, found them there were two that were alive uh, one being tandy a female and there was another male and unfortunately uh, the male managed to survive a little bit i think about a month afterwards but the way that he'd fallen uh, his leg was so badly damaged, all the nerves and things, he couldn't really walk very well. So it was um, a sort of a death caused because of the poaching. He ended up getting stuck in a, in a dam and he drowned during the night, which was very, very sad. If it wasn't for that injury in his leg, he probably would have lived because he didn't have as bad lacerations on his face. Now, of course, this is very gruesome, but I thought it's an opportunity to talk about some of the experiences that I've had um, and, and why I love, love rhinos so much. But I haven't obviously had a chance to really show them to you and tell you about how much I really like them. So very sad this one, uh, this male rhino didn't make it. Now Tandy, who was the worst injured of them all, managed to pull through. I don't know how she managed to do it. It was one of the most horrific things I've ever seen in my entire life. And there, there are documentaries that a reserve called Karika Game Reserve have actually made about her. Again, it's very graphic, but if you want to see the reality of rhino poaching, I highly recommend searching for that clip and just having a watch um, about it. But it's an amazing success story. So she's now lost her horn completely. And I have pulled up a picture. I'll show you a picture of her, of what she looks like now. Um, so anyway, so she obviously underwent a lot of procedures. Vets got involved. Uh, again, we don't normally get involved when the animals are harmed. But if it's due to human interference, such as poaching, we, of course, jump in. And a rhino is a threatened species. We need to try and preserve and save every last one that we can. So it was very interesting to see to go out on these excursions with the vets and watching them treat her. Uh, it wasn't great because she didn't like helicopters as you can imagine she hid away in, in the thickets on on sort of the mountains and it was it was very difficult to try and get her in a vehicle so often they'd have to try and chase her down with the helicopters into the open um, and this was all for her own good of course we wanted to save her so she wasn't a fan of helicopters and luckily she didn't have didn't have a negative effect with her on the vehicles because that was up one of the biggest concerns is that she's never going to want to go near another vehicle again with constantly being darted well, what an incredible rhino. She's actually got a great personality. She was, she's a lovely girl. I look forward to hopefully seeing her again one day. So she's treated, um, no horn, very serious bad scarring. It took about a year uh, for the wound to sort of eventually close up. And, oh, uh, <laughs> I'm just listening to a question. Tina, you said that this story is breaking hard. It's very sad, but it's, it's a true story, and it happens. And I think it's important that we look at both sides. It's great to see all the animals doing so well, and, and you know, we, we try and portray how, how nice everything is. But sometimes we need to talk about these types of things in order to educate people. It's very important, because there's a lot of people that don't actually know what goes on. And I think this is the perfect story, because it's a success story. So she eventually healed, but not completely. As you know, we are 
often see rhinos, or if you've watched any documentaries of rhinos, we even see it with zebra. Animals love to scratch up against trees. It's their favorite thing to do. And one of her favorite things to do was to go and rub her horn up against a tree. But she didn't have a horn anymore. And I can imagine that the scar tissue that she had on her face must have been been irritating at times so she'd go and she'd rub and she'd actually reopen the wound and this happened in I think this was 2012 that it happened if I'm not me yeah, 2012 that this all happened and um, even to this day now she constantly has you'll see a little bit of blood coming down her face but she's okay it's fine it's just a superficial wound now it happens the skin is very sensitive in this area it's not as tough as what it used to she, she reopens that wound but it's, it's she's okay. she's fine she's since then had two calves can you believe it that down the line um, a couple of months later she was actually uh, I think she might have been pregnant during the whole ordeal how she didn't lose the calf I'm not sure but she had a calf and she's just recently had another one I think that must be about eight months six or six or eight months old now which is uh, unbelievable let me show you a picture of Tandy I just have to go search on the interweb I'm not going to show you any graphic images I'm going to show you a picture of Tandy and one of her youngsters. Okay, I mean, there we go. So there she is. So you can see she's still got a little bit of the top horn because remember they have two horns, but that's the smaller bit. But look at that other bit. So that is the wound that I was telling you about that she constantly reopens, but there's one of her calves. I'm not sure if that was her first calf or her second calf, but really, really amazing. And what a success story to see something like that happen. But we can chat a little bit more about rhinos. I'm going to send you to Scott. He wants to say goodbye so you can all see those cheetah for one last time.